First, I want to thank Finnish Musician Union for including me in the good guys and inviting me here. I find it very pleasant to be able to talk with different people about our common concerns and hopefully also common positive things. The speaker in this panel was supposed to be Ayla Sauramo, who is the head of the, the Association of Finnish Symphony Orchestras. But since she broke her leg in the Finnish winter, whether I'm here and um, my knowledge of the whole Finland situation is not as good as hers, but I'll try my best. I also have a very good Finnish delegation sitting there and I hope they will help me if I start to speak something that is really not true. They are the good guys of the musicians. Uh, I want to give you some facts about Finland and the amount of orchestras and then a few words how this economic situation has affected mostly our orchestra in Espo. Finland is a country of lakes and orchestras. There is about 5.4 million Finnish people and 30 orchestras in Finland. Finland is a very big country, era, uh, how do you say it, like aerial. So there are orchestras all around, from Lapland to South Finland. Orchestras are very strongly subsidized by cities. And the cities get funding from the state. Sometimes this causes problems because the cities get the money as a whole and not all the cities give the whole money to the orchestra. So if the state raises its share, it might be that the, the race doesn't go to the orchestras. Um, it varies a little how much uh, different orchestras have their own income, but I think the average is about 10%. So it means 90% of the money comes from public funding. Um, private sponsoring is very difficult in Finland. We don't have a tradition for it. Some orchestras have done it better, like Lahti. I think we have a representative from Lahti here. Um, but most, most of us have great difficulties to get money from the companies. Well, Mr. Schoenwand already told about our exciting political situation. We have this party who in English unfortunately calls themselves True Finns. And we are all waiting how it will go in the election. Okay, thank you. Okay, hope. Oh. <laughs> Let's work better now. Okay. 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 <laughs> So we'll see what happens if, if they win the election, because in Finland it has been a habit to, to give the, the cultural minister position to the, the party who wins a little but not the whole. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. Um, about the finance situation in our orchestra, it hasn't, this crisis hasn't affected us a, a lot. We haven't got more money, but they haven't cut really from us to so what, ha what it has done is that we, we have very carefully thought about amount of concerts and where we have them. And our orchestra is a chamber orchestra. So in, in our orchestra it has affected artistic planning a little because now we play more um, the repertoire where we don't need any extra players. Otherwise our ticket income has raised all these years and um, amount of listeners has also risen, so I don't see very s big changes at the moment. Mm. Of course, this situation means very good planning to all of us, and as, as we heard in the last Mr. Ruska's speech, um, we don't really know what's going to happen in the future. But in Finland, we have quite, quite stable um, law of orchestras and it has been the same during many years not depending on the who, who, which political party is in power I have to per say personally that I see the future quite light and positive but maybe it's just my way of seeing it but in Finland we are not very worried at the moment 
I think that was it. I, maybe I didn't use my five minutes, but may I come away? <laughs> okay. <laughs>